Welcome back to Hannity. As three massive scandals continue to cripple the Obama administration, the president found time in his busy schedule to make a speech highlighting his stances on drone strikes and closing Guantanamo Bay. But in this obvious attempt to distract the American people from what's really important, that being Benghazi cover-up, the IRS targeting conservatives, and the DOJ spying on reporters, the president instead reminded Americans of two broken promises. After all, remember when he signed this executive order during his first week in office. I hereby order. And we then provide uh, the process whereby Guantanamo will be closed uh, no later than one year from now. Broken promise number one. And just 24 hours after his attorney general reluctantly acknowledged the fact that four Americans were killed by drones since 2009, we must also question the administration's vow of transparency. Remember this? Let me say it as simply as I can. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this presidency. Our commitment to openness means more than simply informing the American people about how decisions are made. It means recognizing that government does not have all the answers and that public officials need to draw on what citizens know. So let's get this straight. President Obama tries to distract Americans from the current scandals by reminding us of his broken promises. Here with Reaction, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Senator, thank you for joining us. Uh, so let's talk about this a little bit. We, we talk about these things that are called shiny objects or rabbits because the media likes to chase the rabbits around. Was today's long, hour-long speech a shiny object or a rabbit to distract the Americans' attention from the big scandals, three big ones? Well, I would, I would kind of have a different name for it. I would call it a misdirection campaign. Meanwhile, today I called for the IRS commissioner to be suspended, and about two hours later, somebody did suspend her. Unfortunately, she'll be still receiving her paycheck. But if you're going to plead the Fifth Amendment and you're not going to be part of a congressional investigation, you're not going to participate, I think suspension without pay, absolutely, until we get to the bottom of this. But I think the whole thing, we didn't get much new in the, in the discussion of drones. Senator, uh, we knew about the drones killing an American. We knew Anwar al walaki was a naturalized terrorist. We knew that a drone killed him. That happened two years ago. In fact, the New York Times ran it on their front page two years ago. We knew that he wanted to close Guantanamo Bay four years ago. Why now? Why, what's the timing of this? Is it has anything to do with the big long weekend coming up? And, you know, a lot of Americans, 300 million of us, are going to be standing around a barbecue. I'm just wondering if he wants the discussion to be about drones or if he wants it to be on the, uh, the three pending scandals. Well, we, we have sort of old McDonald's farm of scandals. Here a scandal, there a scandal, everywhere a scandal. So we're not sure which scandal to even talk about. I don't think this will work because he's putting off really the ultimate reckoning. He's saying, oh, in 30 days we'll do this, in 90 days we'll do this. Well, the, the IRS scandal has been going on for over a year. The report's out there. I think they know who is responsible, but he's not getting anybody. Nobody's willing to be fired or removed from office for this. So, now I think it's a bit of misdirection here. There are still some important questions, you know, about American citizens overseas. And he, even though, even that issue, he sort of obscures, he says, of course they should get due process. But his idea of due process is flashcards and a PowerPoint presentation. So even that he doesn't really come clean with. Senator, uh, we've learned that up to 18 suspects in the Benghazi um, terrorist attack have been at least partly surveilled by, by the intel department, by, by the intel uh, people in D.C. Yet, he, we, President Obama himself has said he has a kill list. They, we know of a kill list where he said, if I want to drone someone, it's on the list, they get droned. Aren't these 18 prime, prime suspects for the drones kill list? You know, I'm not sure, but I do know that within the State Department, going back to the Benghazi thing, the four people he said he was going to fire are still there. We called them this week, and they still all have phones at the State Department. So really, the question is, will he follow through with any of this? But I think he's in danger of losing his leadership or his ability to lead the nation because people distrust now whether their government's being used for political purposes. Senator, um, President Obama, when he told us about the IRS scandal uh, two Fridays ago, he said he learned about it on television like everyone else did. Since then, we've learned, Jay Carney backed him up on that. Since then, we've learned that the White House uh, 
general counsel actually was at least made aware of it months ago. And then more recently, we found out that President Obama's own chief of staff has been aware of what's going on at the IRS. Do you believe for one second that President Obama had no idea that the IRS was targeting conservative groups? I think the only way we can find out is to follow the paper trail, and that means we will have to do an investigation. I think we need to know, was there a written directive from Washington? Did it involve the White House, and how, up the how far up the food chain does it go? But I think we only know that by doing an investigation, so I don't want to make conjecture whether the president knew about any of this, but I do have a feeling that the, the criteria of what they were looking for, Tea Party, Patriot, people who have criticized the president, that sounds like something written by a political operative, not by a civil servant. So I think you may find a crossover from civil servant into the political aspect of uh, President Obama's world, but we won't know until we do an investigation. Senator, uh, John Gotti was known as the Teflon Don in the mafia because um, a lot of things came from his office, but he never wrote anything down. He was never really pinpointed with it because he had his group of conciliaries that, that provided a shield around him. Sounds a lot like what's going on in D.C. with me right now. You say they need a, a written, there may have been a written directive. What if there wasn't a written directive, but a directive? Well, you know, I think that whether or not there's a culture of corruption that comes from either the White House or political people within the White House saying, let's get our enemies and we don't care how you do it, that's sort of something unwritten. But I suspect that government employees in multiple IRS offices weren't just doing this on a verbal order. I suspect there was more to it. I suspect that people are now worried about criminal charges because today the IRS agent who's been in the middle of all of this is being suspended. So I really think that we have to get to the bottom of this, but I'm concerned, and I think whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent, nobody wants to see that bully force of government used against people just because they disagree with you politically. Senator, I, I did. I got that release from your office. We all did that, that, that called for the um, uh, the removal of Lois Lerner, um, but but she's she's out put on temporary administrative leave with pay. Is is that enough? Is that okay? Well, it's a beginning. I would have suspended her without pay. The other thing is, is we have to watch closely because what they tend to do is they transfer people around and change their titles. With Benghazi, no one was punished for the fact that for six months they begged for security and it was denied by Hillary Clinton and the State Department. She says, oh, I know nothing. I'm in charge around here, but that decision wasn't made by me. It's the same with the president. I know nothing. I'm in charge of the country, but I don't know anything about that. Attorney General Holder has sort of the same opinion. I'm in charge around here, but oh, I think I recused myself from that decision. I wasn't involved. So we have all of these people. Nobody wants to take responsibility. And when they say someone was reassigned or fired, we find out they're still in their position at the State Department. All right, Senator Rand Paul, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you.